I'm having typewriter problems. She's there. And that's her keeper. I hope she's gonna fit in there. Huh. What are you cooking? Breakfast for dinner. Breakfast. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I think it's just a Oh, is it too big? Okay. It won't fit. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't fit. Yeah, it's bigger than my suitcase. I think I'm just gonna take a cab. Hmm? I'm just gonna take a taxi. On the bus, I'm not gonna be able. Okay, operation aborted. That is heavy. Oh my god. I don't know why you uh, you want a uh, typewriter. Oh, but to type. Yeah, but uh, especially <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. You, uh, a laptop or something. Oh no, it's much better on this. <laughs> mm? You're you're a chef. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's not that big. I thought it was going to be huge. Yeah. You find it too big? Oh, and is that a new chair? Mm -hmm. Well, that was a bust. Now we know that. Persephone's case doesn't fit in that suitcase and I'm not about to bring a big one here so taxi cab it is. Hey it's Rocky! Hello Rocky! C'est l'heure du thé ici sur la rue Harrow. <laughs> yeah. Two weeks later. Those of you who haven't met her yet, this is Persephone, my Vancouver typewriter. I've actually had her for three years. She was okay a couple days ago. I don't know what's going on. And now... See what she does? And then when I type, she doesn't move. The carriage doesn't move. And then... It's not... <laughs> I tried moving it manually, but to have to do that every time you type a letter is not possible. And then that's what she does when you hit carriage return. So yeah, she's not doing good. Which kind of sucks because I wanted to make a mini zine about her life, a biography of her. And I think I should do that with each one of my typewriters because I have a lot of typewriters. I've had a lot of typewriters. I even had a typewriter that I murdered. Yes, I killed her. I got her in Quebec and I moved with her in Vancouver. I brought her here. And then something happened. I will tell you the story time at some point. And yes, uh, she was murdered in a back alley, not far from here. I'm sorry to say, typewriter murder is not something I condone, but yeah, I'm guilty. I did it. But yeah, my friend Alfred knows someone who repairs typewriters, so I shot him an email and I'll see what he says. And if he doesn't, if if that doesn't work, I'm gonna ask Brandy and Rebecca at the Regional Assembly of Text because they have a lot of typewriters, so they probably know where to have them repaired here. I hope we can save her. 
I said, you know, I like her. I got grown attached to her. I've had her for three years. So as you know, my typewriter, that's the fun, has been broken since August. It has not worked and I have tried to find a typewriter repair person to no avail. I was told that Art Skill, yes, that's his name, Art Skill, first name Art, last name Skill. Well, the Pacific Press, which its name now, the Sun and the province were obviously using typewriters for the hundred in the editorial rooms. They were separated. The noise when you went in was just continual typing. We would do a service. If they broke down, they had to have them going and we would service or replace a part or a ribbon, whatever was required. Art skill. He's 87 years old is not in a condition to uh, do that kind of work anymore. His health has deteriorated. That's really sad because he was kind of the typewriter person in Vancouver. I've been trying to call around a few other places. No place even answered the phone. So my good friends, my good friends at the Regional Assembly of Pets, who have typewriters, they are a stationery store and they used to hold a monthly letter writing club where they would have a long table out with like 16 or 20 typewriters there for people to use to encourage people to write letters and I asked them if maybe they could uh, loan me one and actually I think they offered, yeah, I didn't even have to ask. I was going to ask them but they actually offered it to me. So Brandy and Rebecca, thank you. I'm going to go up on Main Street right now to pick up a new typewriter. I mean, I'm not giving up on Persephone. She's not dead. She just has a carriage return problem. I'm gonna still keep looking for a person to repair her because she is electric. I'm probably sure that the one that they're gonna loan me is probably manual. So hello, blisters. I was with Ronald and he's always like, why don't you use the computer? I'm like, it's not the same thing. It's just not fun. It's just typing on a computer. It's, it's boring. I want to have the paper. I want to have the look of the, you know, if you're a zine star, you know what I mean. You know what I'm talking about. So 
filming everything because I don't know which one's going to look good or not. Okay, is it okay if we make some noise? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's going to be music over that. So okay. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> it's so cool. I appreciate it. How small is that other one you found? So welcome to the lowercase Z reading room. In normal time, you can just come in the shop, come in here, grab a zine, have a seat, and read. And it's totally free. But right now, because of COVID, the reading room is closed. But my friends were nice enough to give me access for my video. See if you can find one of mine. That could be it. Nope. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yes, here I am. <laughs> so a lot of people ask me, what's a zine? And these are all zines. A zine is any little publication that a person makes. It can be a collective, but it's usually an individual. It could be a collab also. Sometimes it's two people making a zine together. 90% of the time, it's one person putting out a zine and it could be about any subject that you want to talk about. It could be about cats, social issues, trains, travel, personal, anything. So these are all examples of zines that I've been making them for 22 years. Et oui, je fais des zines en français. Également. Zines have no language, they have no culture, they are universal. There are common themes, as you can see. A lot of times people who make zines have a certain way of going about the world. They have certain politics that are often not the same, but like coherent with each other. But anyone can make a zine. These are mini zines, but smaller ones. They're very hard to make, in my opinion, the smaller ones. Some people prefer making the small format, but I find it very difficult to fit everything I have to say in such a small format. So the phone died while I was on my way back from the regional assembly of text. Look at the beautiful little note that they wrote to me. Wow, I am so touched. So meet Phyllis. She is my temporary Vancouver typewriter. I've typed almost the entirety of my zine on her. I call her Phyllis because she has well, it's a nice old lady name, and I think old lady names fit typewriters. But um, she has green keys, and I think that the suffix fill or the prefix fill, P-H-Y-L-L, -L, has something to do with green when you think of chlorophyll. I don't have time to research that right now. 
She's been very useful. Thank you so much. And now I'm gonna have to bring her back just before I leave Vancouver. So you see I've typed the inside cover. And many, many, many articles. And the book reviews, zine reviews, and intro I'll probably type on my Selectric 2 when I get in Levy and finish the zine, and then it will be ready to send to people. for what happened to Persephone, my Vancouver typewriter that I've had for three years. She wasn't working. It was impossible for me to find a repairman. I tried to find one here in the city. I called many places. I tried to find one in Victoria. There was nothing to do. So what I did is I ended up putting up a poster. Échouer, c'est une façon de progresser vers le succès. Une des citations les plus populaires de Michael Jordan, c'est la suivante. Yeah. J'ai perdu plus de 300 matchs à 26 reprises. On m'a délégué, on m'a fait confiance pour lancer ce qui aurait pu être le pain. Saying that I didn't want to throw her away and I wanted to give her a good home. Alors c'est le moment, je m'excuse, j'ai une extinction de voix car je sais pas si c'est mon plongeon euh... Dans l'eau froide qui fait ça, là, vous irez voir ça, là, le, 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 le vidéo après, le, le vidéo que je viens juste de faire. Hein. Je n'ai plus eu de voix. Ah, 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 je suis plus capable de parler. Mais c'est le moment de dire au revoir à Perséphone. My Vancouver typewriter, you have served me well. You've been with me through thick and thin. And uh, now... We have found you a new home. After placing those ads in town, I just received a text from a local person and they're going to come to pick her up this afternoon. So I'm going to get her in her carrying case, which is right here. Alors, c'est une belle aventure. Persephone, merci d'avoir été ma dactylo pendant trois ans et je te souhaite tout le bonheur du monde dans ton nouveau foyer. Ça me fait quelque chose d'avoir parti. Là. So Persephone has been re home to a guy whose name is Darren and we're gonna keep in touch so I'm gonna know how she's doing. I'm gonna keep in touch by mail. So thanks, Darren. He saw my ad and came here to pick her up, and he's gonna give her a good home. Because some people just like to have a typewriter as a decoration in their home. So I'm glad he's gonna enjoy her. She's having a good life. She's gonna be appreciated. Maybe she just wanna retire, you know? Maybe she had enough of writing and she just wanted to take it easy. So yeah, she's just gonna take it easy on the shelf. Every country in Europe made a machine. Then the Japanese became the main electronic typewriters, which are still available. We sell full-size machines for law firms or offices of all kinds, and also for individuals. War correspondents used these small portables so they could carry them into the trench, if you like, or any pile, I think it was one. Well, that's the history of typewriters that started in 1890.